Hamilton County Commission uh, meeting to order today, February 2nd, 2023. Uh, we're going to start with a silent prayer and follow up with uh, our Pledge of Allegiance. And um, it's really hard for me to put in words, um, better in prayer, what has happened as we saw the video, uh, the world saw the video uh, of what happened in Memphis. And so um, just ask, to please, uh, the funeral was, I believe, yesterday. And let's just, please, um, Tyree Nichols, his family, um, please keep them in prayer, uh, as well as the family in the incident in Wyoming. Amen. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Thank you. Uh, now we'll open it up for public comments. Anyone here or on Zoom? Such a packed house today. <laughs> Anyone on Zoom? No comments on Zoom. Uh, I'm going to open it up uh, for comments of the Board of Commission. Um, I will uh, go to the Vice President first. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just a couple of things today. Uh, one thing, I wanted to announce that um, through a member of the Commission on Women and Girls, uh, it's Jill Miller. She is head of BI3. There are grants available for schools in Hamilton County to promote and have World Teen Mental Health Wellness Day events in their schools. Um, the grants are up to $500 per school to plan, create, and lead activities to ra raise awareness regarding World Teen Mental Wellness Day, which is March 2nd. And so I just want to put that out. We're trying to push this information out to schools um, trying to reduce stigma about mental health and also make sure that kids that are in school settings understand where the resources are. Uh, kind of, and we've done a lot of work on mental health as well, but I did want to promote that uh, the deadline is quickly um, coming upon us uh, because the day is on March 2nd. So any school or any um, student that's interested in following up on this, please contact our office and we'll connect them with BI3. Um, the other thing that happened, uh, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, the governor gave his state of the state, and um, much of what he talked about impacts counties. And so um, as a member of the CCAO Executive Committee, I got a rundown, I'm sure we all got it, um, regarding what the governor's budget means to counties uh, related to indigent defense, jail construction, local government fund, um, next generation 911, and so uh, I will. I, I'm going through this information myself. Um, there is some good news in this budget. The local government fund, for one, was increased. Uh, it's a pretty small amount, but still, it's heading in the right direction. So that's good news. Um, there's an in, uh, increase in jail construction funding, and so hopefully Hamilton County can take advantage of that. So I just wanted to bring that attention to the administration and to the board. I just received this document today, um, and so I'll look forward to ongoing conversations about how we access some of the funding that's being made available through the state. Uh, and then lastly, I, I had the opportunity to attend the African American Chamber annual meeting. Um, it was very well done. Eric Kearney is the executive director, CEO, and um, he introduced his team, and it was a celebration of the work that the African American Chamber has been doing to promote small businesses in the community. So I was happy to represent the commission at that event. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a few things. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Human Resources for pulling together the posting on the initiative, Inspire initiative, and the posting is down. Uh, we had about 34 people 
that applied. Uh, it's a part-time position, and so I'll be moving forward on that to try to get that initiative started uh, no later than the 1st of March. So I want to thank Frank and his people. Uh, in addition, um, I was looking for applicants for the TID, Transportation Improvement District uh, Committee, and so I did uh, find someone who was interested in doing it, and they are currently filling out an application uh, to be a part of that. And uh, the Board of Revision, there's a young lady who put in way back in October uh, for the Board of Revision. She's been on there before. Uh, she had to wait because they were po they needed to post a position because it is a, a paid position, um, part-time position also. So we're waiting to um, assign her to the Board of Revision uh, through my office. No fault of hers, but there was a delay because it had never been posted before. Um, as far as, I don't know, never, but it hadn't been posted before, and so it needed to be posted. Well, she's been, like I said, been on it before. Um, and I just wanted to say, as you were saying, Madam President, about prayer, prayer is always in order. Um, just our whole nation is too violent, and uh, we just need to be continually on our knees, or however you do it, uh, in prayer to try to stop this violence in our whole uh, United States of America. Um, last Tuesday, um, I attended the land bank meeting. Was that last Tuesday or? It was this Tuesday after. Yeah, okay, I attended the land bank meeting and so Port Authority uh, usually facilitates that and so uh, they are continuing to work uh, to try to acquire more properties, more land, more affordable housing. So certainly was an interesting meeting. Um, I attended a a webinar about the Brent Spence again, uh, the Brent Spence Bridge, um, and it was more about the aesthetics of the bridge. If anybody's interested in letting them know what color you think the bridge should be, what what should be vertical versus horizontal, things like that, it was a lively discussion um, from the group that was there. Lots of people online, um, and so you need to do that right now because I saw last night it's moving. The development is moving very quickly. Um, last night, I was a speaker at the NAMI, uh, National Alliance of Mental Health, Mental Illness, um, with, with uh, Ms. Gloria Walker, and I uh, spoke to them about uh, the commission and what they do and how much mon money we've given to mental illness, but she had her little agenda, I think. She wanted to know all about the commissioners I brought. I want to thank Holly for pulling together the monies that we had spent on mental illness. She said, and why do you have that? So you wanted to know, oh, I got a plan for you. So it was a good group, and they wanted to know about us and what we do. So uh, I thought it was a good meeting. Um, and that will in my report, Madam President. Thank you. Um, a couple things. Uh, I last week met with the CEO of the Hamilton County Public Library, and uh, we had a very good uh, meeting, uh, good updates. The library's doing some good work, opening some new facilities, updating some facilities, and um, looking at ways that we can uh, partner even more uh, with our board and things that we're doing. Uh, they're excited to hear about what we're doing and how they can be uh, a partner so um, a better partner, we've been partnering with them, but do even more. So was excited about that meeting. Also, uh, we all three of us attended the uh, emergency management um, meeting, executive committee meeting, and uh, was happy to uh, be sworn in now as one of the co-chairs of that. And uh, excited about the work always that Nick Crosley uh, does and it continues to do uh, to make sure that we're prepared, preparation, uh, they always say, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And uh, Nick Crosley is working very hard for us to stay ready and be prepared. So uh, one of the things that was brought up at the meeting that I think they're going to also work on education-wise, when these disasters happen, uh, once the, the news is gone, uh, the damage is still there for people to have to deal with. And what should they be asking when before the they have a disaster what should be in your insurance plan i think a lot of us you know you get insurance but you don't really understand all of the fine print and so uh, one of the things um, he said was a, a major problem and they're going to work maybe have a toolkit to help homeowners uh, renters to put together what should you be looking for when you get your insurance plan uh, for a possible a disaster uh, if it were to occur. So I think that's important. 
Also, the um, 513 Relief Bus uh, stopped out there yesterday at Lincoln Heights Missionary Baptist Church. And um, it was interesting. I think it's very important. We talk about the economics of the bus, and Jaws of Family Services was out there. I think over 100 people got help. I saw uh, there was someone out there that needed help, uh, and Talbert House was our partner, and they were able to help those folks get some type of housing. They were actually out there and came and said, we have nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was just some of the, the interactions and the work that our staff is doing through the 513 Relief Bus, the stories that you hear of people needing help has just been remarkable of how they've been able to help them. But the other part that we don't talk as much about, and I think we, besides just vaccinations, that this bus is also health, a health bus. This bus helps with health. And they were doing free screenings. All the screenings are free. But free screenings, and I learned about this, uh, regarding amputation prevention. I didn't know they had a screening for that. Uh, because if you sit around and you might get older or you're just sitting around, uh, they have tests. They were testing people how to prevent future amputation. And so there were a lot of people there, along with uh, this is a, a American Heart Association month, and they were taking blood pressure check. Obviously, the heart disease is the silent killer. So all of those health components of the bus, um, helping people you know, stay alive, I think are, are, are critical. So, and it's open to Hamilton County residents. Someone said, can I go and get a blood pressure? Yes, you can, and it doesn't cost you anything. So um, if you want to know where the next stop is, I don't have it in front of me, but you could go to 513relief.org. It'll tell you the next stop and what added services, uh, because each stop we have different types of services that will be um, available there. So wanted to, to highlight that uh, we had an incredible kickoff last week at Corinthian Baptist Church, and I think serviced uh, over a couple hundred people and also provided over 100 um boxes of food with fresh produce, et cetera. So uh, this, this bus is really out there helping to connect uh, people to all the services that we have voted on on this, uh, on this board. So I wanted to say that. I wanted to also, uh, I also wanted to say that, um, as you know, this is Black History Month, and this commission has been dedicated on a number of initiatives to close the gap, to make sure that no one's left behind. And we have a number of things that we have done. Uh, in this month, we will um, have a recognition and celebration that Commissioner Dumas started uh, uh, when she first got elected for Black History Month. And that will, we'll be getting that date, I think it's in two weeks, we'll get that date. We will also have uh, a couple things during this month. We will also have a Black Business Day here. And during that day, I'm asking the administration um, to also have a report, our uh, inclusion and equity report, what we're doing as it relates to our disparity study. There are some initiatives that are recommended, and we would. I want to um, ask my colleagues. Looking forward to a resolution passing some of those initiatives to action. I think all three of us have seen them, but we'd like to pass a uh, Black History Action resolution. And during that day, so we're going to have a Black Business Day here. We're going to also highlight Black businesses on our website that we have helped a lot black businesses and then be uh, and talk about through our small business office and through our equity and inclusion office under the direction of Robert Bell. So we'll be doing that. We also will be highlighting, I uh, was told by Bridget, we'll be highlighting some of our employees. We have history makers within our county. We would want those history makers highlighted uh, as well. And they are in a number of um, departments and there are a number of people since our board has gotten here that we have moved to diversify qualified folks and we want to uh, honor them during this Black History Month because we have made some history right here in Hamilton County. 
Uh, we will also, in addition to that, uh, wanted to just say that we have one of the largest or the largest equity and inclusion project on the Ohio banks in the history of Hamilton County. And it sits between both our uh, football NFL stadium and our baseball major league stadium. And where it's placed, where slaves came over, I don't know how they got over because they didn't know how to swim. Came over from Kentucky, was able to survive. Many of them lived on that area. And that area uh, was Bucktown around that area. And they were run off of that area because of what they called black laws. And they were moved to the West End. So we have a lot of stories like that. And to come back was an outdoor interactive tourism attraction that people from all over the world could come to at no cost called the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame is a, a, is a one of the bold steps that, and we have others that we have made as we talk about black history. One of the things I think is important with Black History Month is that we, everything is not just the past. We got to celebrate the past. We got to celebrate the present and we got to celebrate the future. But the key missing component that's important is that we must take action. So I would just challenge everyone during this month and all months, but if you haven't done it the other months, let's take some action and this board has taken uh, action. We had a hearing, uh, or if you will, presentation on Tuesday about the gun range, the environmental uh, injustice that is taking place uh, in our county that is located in Evendale, but affects also not just Evendale, but affects Lincoln Heights, the village of Lincoln Heights, the village of Woodlawn, and so many generations of babies. As we, as we stick, stick on this point of Black History Month, so many generations of babies who we don't know, eardrums have gotten blown out, they've gotten immune to what they've heard. We've had UC Children's Hospital and others do medical studies, and it's an atrocity. Now, none of us who are elected, both at the county or the city, put that gun range, or our chiefs currently today, both the sheriff and the chief, put that gun range there. It was done, I don't know, 70 years ago, I think, Mr. Dumas. On it. And as you've indicated, uh, Bishop Hilton, your chief of staff, he was six years old maybe, and he's 60 now. And so when people hear, why is there urgency? Um, and why would you ruffle any feathers? And, you know, I understand I'm going to get some stars or some people might not be happy. They'll get over it because I think at the end of the day, the goal is to get this done as Vice President Driehaus has indicated. One of the things I think is critical, though, is I have been a proponent of what I call one set of rules. When you got one set of rules, everybody knows the rules and we can move forward. And there has been a history that predates us that when a certain group has a something, it moves quicker if it's corporate and downtown. And then when it's community or a village or a small city or out in the community or African-American, it tends to say we got to meet more, we got to look into it, we got to do more. And so I'm saying that let's move at the same speed, and it really at the same speed because it's been, what, 60 years, mm -hmm. to get this done. We must have a timeline and a deadline and a completion. When you're in class, they give you a time to complete the test. You just can't you know, take all the time that you want. So um, I am aggressive. I don't want to speak for my other two colleagues, uh, but I'll say they are aggressive as well. We're so close. We're so close to getting this thing done. $11 million gap for even just to, you know, just to get the basics and everything, as uh, the administrator said. And so I'm looking everywhere, and I'm putting heat on everybody that I can find that who could put some more money in. This board put $5 million in. Then we came back, put $10 million. 
$15 million just trying to get this thing done. And now we have a, and then the city put in $2 million, and the federal government put in $4 million so far. Uh, I've asked the administrator when we come back, we said 30 days, we want to get an update, and we hope to have a money update to look at other, any other ways or how we might ever to move this piece forward. I did talk with uh, the mayor today, uh, Mayor Avtap Pirabal from the city. I've got to say what mayor, because we got multiple mayors as we represent. And I was uh, clear, and he said that they had $2 million, and I would definitely want us to work together. We've been working together. Jan Michelle has been leading this charge on behalf of the city as the vice mayor. Uh, but I also reached out to the governor. I'm not just reaching out, oh, it's just that. No, I'm looking for everybody. This has gone on too long. Everyone says it's bad. Everybody said we got to do something. We got to do something. And this is Black History Month, and I can't think of a bigger black history thing we could do with the city, the county, the villages, the townships, than announcing that this thing has the money and we're moving forward. That would be big. That would be black history. Mm -hmm. That would be the right thing to do. This is also a health hazard. It's not just, oh, they just want to move. This is a health hazard. And it is a 911. So um, as an administrator uh, within this time period, unfortunately, Black History Month only gives us 28 days. Um, but I'd like to, when we come back on the calendar, I'd like for us to look at what way we can move and hopefully we can move from just meeting. We know we have to have other meetings, but how do we get to filling this gap, getting a shovel in the ground, not just any shovel, and getting an agreement that they're gonna that they will move the Cincinnati police, um, the police gun range. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, I am I was on uh, Willie Cunningham today. And uh, I even asked him, I said, Willie, help us get to the governor. He said he's making a call to the governor to see if we can get some gap financing. We have $11 million that is needed. So I, I reached out to the governor. He's reaching out to the governor. Everybody, all hands on deck. But we have to do it expeditiously. Expeditiously. So I wanted just to highlight that and uh, wanted to... Uh, put that out there, what our position is, and, um, you know, it might get tough, it might get rocky, but remember, it's not about us, it's about these babies, and when you talk about the babies, I get real, I get real tough on it, because they can't speak for themselves, they can't come down here and march, they deserve to be born and be in a, a community that they can grow and reach their potential. They didn't ask to be born where they're born. And so if we're gonna do anything on this, let's get it done. And I'm gonna always be saying that, and not just saying it, I'm gonna be working toward it. So that's what's going on that I know from, uh, as it relates to the, the Cincinnati Police uh, gun range. And if it wasn't the Cincinnati Police, we would be having the health department out there saying it's a nuisance. So we are working together because none of us created the problem, but we're in a position now to end the problem. And I'm looking for all of us to work together. Uh, lastly, I wanted to say on Tyree Nichols uh, in Memphis, I'm just tired of seeing it. Uh, when he called out for his mama, mm. and we're calling on the Congress to pass the George Floyd um, Safety Act in Washington so that we can have good police community relations. Uh, when I got the news, I did reach out to Sheriff McGuffey, our sheriff, regarding uh, this issue uh, to get guidance on anything we need to be doing or could be doing. And uh, so we're working and in close contact with her. So I wanted to highlight that as well. Uh, that's all I have. I'll ask the uh, administrator for your 
comments and any resolutions? Um, Madam President, no comments for five leaves today. What? <laughs> what? You're over there writing it down, so I know we got something. I'm, I'm writing it down. I, just want, <laughs> I wanted to give Lisa as much time as she possibly needed <laughs> in your items here. So. <laughs> um, Madam Chair? Yes, Commissioner. Uh, if I could just make a, a ask a question and make a comment about what you had said in your report. As far as the 513 relief bus, uh, specifically for me, the housing element, when someone takes application for housing, who is providing the follow-up and how long are we waiting for the follow-up? Would it be uh, Director Patton? Um, who is it? Who would it be? A minister? Uh, I, I'd have to check with uh, uh, Ms. Howard in terms of who our direct point person is on housing and, and how they're linking that back. Uh, of, for housing needs, but I can get that to you right after the meeting today. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. And, and if you like, I'll also, uh, I know they only been in two locations, but maybe come in because I'm concerned about that too. When they get it, what's the, it's supposed to be a team out and then a team back following up and what's the timeline. Um, so maybe we can have them come in and maybe present what that process is. Yeah, that would be I know they're still yeah. trying to get, he could get that information to you quicker, but maybe give him a little, I was trying to give him like 30 days, kind of uh -huh. work out the, the kinks and okay. then have him come forward. Would that be okay? That'll be fair. Great. That'll, what I was going to say, that'll be fine. But I was, <laughs> what did I say? That'll be fair. That'll be fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And just one last thing as it relates to the gun range. Um, I am going to have uh, Bishop Hilton work with Jeff as it relates to funding, because as you were saying, uh, Madam Chair, everyone that we've asked and everyone that you mentioned are governmental entities. And so after that meeting, there was a gentleman that was in our land bank meeting, and he said, I didn't know this about Lincoln Heights and what was going on. And he said, it really touched him. He said he wanted to like get out his money out of his pocket and give some money. So I want Bishop to work with Jeff uh, or his administration to look at how we can have individuals that might want to give, how we can have private donors, companies that might want to give, because so far, everyone who's given is a governmental entity. So uh, if there are any nonprofits to say, you know, this is a good effort. Um, and so I don't know how legally we do that. Uh, I know Mike will know, but um, to have Bishop talk to Jeff about that possibility, and it may happen a little quicker. So. Thank you. I um, also asked Jeff to present us some options um, as well. So I think uh, including that, but um, some some other options if we have to if we have to step even further up uh, okay. to get this done. I just I'm. They're up, you mean instead of governor, go to the president? Is that what uh -huh. you're saying? Yeah, well, yeah, we call him up. <laughs> we'll call him up, no, yeah. yeah. But um, just seeing how, sure. just presenting us all our Absolutely. options, uh, you know, we've done things, uh, other, you know, just being creative. Are there some other creative financing tools? Uh, because obviously, you know, we, we want to get this moving and grooving. And uh, Vice President, uh, yeah, I just want to add a little bit of um, flavor also to the conversation about funding. So we uh, have gone to the federal government. Sherrod Brown has that four million as an earmark from his office. We've also reached out to the U.S. Marshal's office, and I think it's the ATF because they will be using the facilities. So we've got a couple of things in the hopper at the federal government. Um, we had a conversation with the governor, and I appreciate your outreach as well. Um, the mayors of Evendale Woodlawn and Lincoln Heights were all on the call um, asking the governor to support our efforts. There was a presentation actually at that time, it's been a while back. Um, the governor indicated that he wanted to be helpful. Uh, and so we were hopeful that something um, perhaps in the budget would be reflected in that. Um, but beyond that, we, I, I, I agree that the state is a good place to look. We've got a delegation meeting coming up, uh, and I know it's on the list of things to discuss with the delegation. Our state representative, Cindy Abrams, and our state senator, Blessing, are also supportive of the project and could be helpful when it comes to the state budget and money through, uh, through the state, and, and whether it's in the budget or somewhere else. Um, so I did want to make sure that... Um, there was a conversation about some of the outreach that has happened. It has happened in the last few months. It wasn't, you know, as recently as yesterday or, or today, but it has happened. Um, and then the other piece is the private funding. There, there was a letter that went out to a, 
a company that is nearby that would have a great deal of interest, I would think, in moving the gun range. But I love the idea of additional companies that might have some interest mm -hmm. on the private side um, to help with the effort. So I think that the number we're still trying to hone in on, I think we've heard 31 million for phase one. Try, still trying to get that down a little bit lower, uh, working with the city to try to compress the number um, so that it's more manageable. But I also had the idea of, you know, we've done five, then, then we did 10. Um, while I don't think the county needs to fund this entire project, I hear what you're saying about anything more that we can come up with, but in collaboration um, with the city, with the state, with the federal government, all the, all the local partners that we've been working with. So um, more to come. I think we're tr trying uh, very hard to figure out what the actual number is so that when the final ask goes to the state, as you say, um, we know exactly what we're asking for. You know, how much money exactly are we asking for? Because in so many cases, I think the state likes to be the last dollar in. Um, and so we're trying to hone in on that number right now. So I uh, appreciate all the efforts of everybody. Um, all three of us have been working on this. We've been we've been working for a while. And I, and I understand the frustration. It has taken a long time, but there are a lot of moving parts on this one. Um, so hopefully we'll get there within the next few months. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, you said you had nothing. Well, you got a lot, so you got to go back and get the pencils and get the creative finance and go. What do you need? I said, we need to find something for him to do, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's done not enough work for him to do. <laughs> okay, no, no worries. We're going to the uh, regular agenda. Yes, we have the, we've got a several items from the engineer yes, department. Good. Sorry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ms. Um, I'm Lisa Durger. I am the budget director at the engineer's office. I am standing in for engineer Beck. He is at a conference today. So um, we have four items that are before you today. All these items are related. Um, they're in relation to project um, improvements to Fields, Ertle Road, Snyder to Wilkins Boulevard, which is our project number 501715. Um, we do have federal dollars in this project, so we have to follow the federal process when appropriating properties. Um, for the construction of this project. Uh, all these parcels are needed for the construction of the project. There was an establishment hearing uh, that the board held on November 17th of 22 and was approved on the 12th of January this year. Um, so at this time, the appraisals have been conducted. All four of these parcels um, and their property owners were informed of the fair market value. Um, and this is just the next step in the process to get these parcels appropriated for the construction of the project. Um, and this will go through the prosecutor's office. It allows us to take it to them. So for resolution number one, the uh, dollar value is $16,436. For resolution number two, it's $6,876. Resolution three is $9,000. And resolution four is $6,997. All of these funds will be paid out of engineers' permissive auto tax fund. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions, Vice President Drias? Mr. No Dewey? questions. Mm -hmm. Questions. Uh, I make a motion to approve items one through four. Second. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Drehouse. Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Thank you. Uh, now we go to the consent agenda. I'm going to ask uh, Administrator Ludo if you will. Uh, Walk us through those and highlight the ones that have uh, financial implications. Thank you, Madam President. So uh, item number five on the consent agenda is a budget adjustment. This is a budget adjustment for two grants, uh, $34,000 in adult probation for a grant to assist victims of crime, uh, $237,000 grant, uh, a Recovery Ohio grant for QRT and the and quick response team uh, activities in the prosecutor's office. Uh, item number six is a $98,000 agreement uh, with Howard Worshbale and company. This relates to an operational review uh, for the zoo for the benefit of the tax levy review committee as they do their work this year reviewing uh, that particular item um, uh, for recommendation to the board. Uh, we have a grant, uh, $24,000 grant, uh, Marine Patrol Assistance Grant uh, to the Hamilton County Sheriff. Uh, we have a $300,000 agreement uh, between the Sheriff uh, and uh, Recruitment Strategies LLC for administrative support, public engagement, uh, and strategic program planning. Uh, 
Uh, we have a $417,000 resolution, which relates to the establishment of several POs. Um, uh, this is software support over at juvenile court, uh, postage at Job and Family Services, uh, and Wi-Fi LAN services over at Job and Family Services. Uh, we have a uh, cabin chassis replacement, uh, three cabin chassis replacements through the engineer's office uh, at 285,000. Uh, then we also have uh, some a credit card uh, a resolution authorizing credit card usage in common police court. Uh, and we have the sheriff's report of no objections on a liquor permit application. Um, use of credit cards by Veteran Services Commission and a request for authorization to travel uh, to Austin, Texas for two employees in the coroner's office. Uh, thank you. I wanted to just highlight item number six. Uh, it is a, a contract with a company to look at the levy, the zoo levy, is that correct? That's correct, an operational review of the zoo levy, correct. And um, I had some concern, not, not a, a lot of concern, but I want to be clear. I wonder if I vote on this, I'm not agreeing because I want to take a look at, you know, all the levies and I'm going to meet with the zoo. I, I know they're interested in going up or what have you, but I don't want to have the TLRCs, you know, these are volunteers or giving up their time. Um, I want to be clear. I want to look at what ways can we reduce the tax burden off these homeowners, these property owners because they're getting killed out here. I mean, I saw a lot of them running in trying to pay the property taxes. Uh, I was out in Colerain Township yesterday with a small business, and they said, you know, can I pay online? I showed them how to go online. They said, well, can I, you know, I, I can't pay it all right now. How did, you know, what kind of, and I know that our treasurer's doing a good job, but we've got to keep our, you know, it's hard sometimes because people say, well, I need a levy, and then you see all this development going on. It's kind of like, how are you buying up Avondale if you say that you're broke? And while we definitely, our zoo is number one, in my opinion, in the world. Uh, but we want to make sure, you know, we want to make sure the uh, they have a home, but we also not at the expense of somebody losing their home. So I just want to make sure that if I vote on this, I'm not saying I'm for an increase or I'm for the continuation just allow me to be able to at least meet with the zoo and hear them out and show us what we're doing. But I do have a question. It's not my question. It's Avondale. A lot of people say, how are they expanding? Every time I look up, it's a bulldozer out here. And then you keep going up on my property taxes. And then, you know, you can't be broke if you've got development going on. So I just want to make sure that, that if I vote for this, I'm not yeah. saying that. Um, because I don't think they did anything wrong with the money or anything. Sure, like that. sure, correct, Madam President. Yeah, so this, res and this through this resolution, all you are doing is um, um, indicating the 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 need for an operational review to help the Tax Labor Review Committee do its work. You're not positioning yourself one way or the other on a future vote uh, or anything like that. In in fact, just anecdotally, uh, we've had commissions in the past agree with disagree with recommendations ultimately from the TLRC. So uh, at this point, all you're saying is in order for the TLRC to do their work, um, it would uh, an operational review would be helpful to benchmark the activities of the zoo, et cetera. But you're not you're not positioning yourself on a vote for the levy placement on the ballot or anything like that. Okay. Yes, because I don't, I mean, I know they're looking to see did the zoo use the money properly. I'm sure they did. Um, but I would like to see the RFP go beyond that to look at if you're going to make a recommendation to the TLRC who are volunteers putting in so much work and we're so appreciative of them. But I want them to get the total picture. I would like to add in here all the development that's happening, even though we might not be paying for it. But, it, you know, if you're broke, how much of your money is going to development? Are we paying for the operations? And then you freeze up your money to do all this development? Because I'm telling you, some homeowners in, in Avondale are not happy that they lost their house or couldn't afford to keep it or the taxes were so high that, you know, they were able to get bought out for a little bit of peanuts. Yeah, so the, the capital and the operational uh, work of the zoo, I'm sure, will be a part of this. And, okay. And uh, certainly to the degree, and I'll talk with Lisa, to the degree that there's some things we need to uh, put into the scope of work to make sure it provides a full picture, we can certainly do that. Okay, thank you. And like I said, I not, haven't made my decision. I just want to put those, those are questions that were posed to me, and I look forward to meeting, uh, going out. I, I mean, I go out for fun, but now going out and have a business uh, uh, understanding of what's happening. 
So um, that was my only uh, question for clarification. Vice President Driehaus, did you? No questions. Uh, Commissioner Dumas, do you have anything? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, item six was also a question that I had. I know that the consultant will um, make some decisions or recommendations to the TL. RC uh, as it relates to level of increase, if there needs to be an increase or if it needs to stay the same. And this is a continued levy that comes up every uh, five years. That's what I thought. Thank you for the show. Okay. And number, um, so that was, uh, is this Howard Worsh Bale? Is he, is he, I'm going to know if he was a new consultant? And we've used them before for the zoo. Uh, Lisa, how many, how many? Spills Consulting Group, uh, they're out of Cleveland, and they have done the last two zoo reviews as well. Okay. So they'll be updating, and they did the Senior Services Levy Review in the last cycle as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And um, item 10, on the replacement um, chassis, three of them, um, uh, 2024 replacement chassis. <clears throat> is that, uh, I know they're on a rotational scale, so is that, they normally get that many at once, or? Uh, I will defer to Ms. Dorger on this particular item, since she's here. Not a problem. Okay. Um, so yeah, we typically buy three per year. Um, we'd like to be on a replacement schedule around like a 15 year, but it's more like a 20 year right now. Oh. We're trying to get there, but yeah, okay. we typically buy three every year. Okay, thank you so much. Um, and lastly, uh, number 13. Um, the Veterans Service Commission, um, Jeff, is this going to be one staff person that's using this credit card or um, how many people? Uh, usually, usually when the purchase of credit cards is for the department. So uh -huh. um, it would uh, for any of the purposes and the uses allowed by the revised code uh, for credit card, just like we have one in the administration, most, most departments have one. Um, it would be able to be used by staff of the Veterans Services Commission. Um, whether that is primarily one person or multiple, I don't know that I can answer that right now, but okay. it could be used um, on a wider range than just one person. I, I'm, I'm re concerned about the 12,000 because this is a small budget veteran service commission is a small budgeted commission. And I'm looking at the credit card amount for big, for larger entities like uh, 11, a common pleas is 31,000, okay. And this is 12,000, but our budget, why is it so high? Uh, I could follow up on that for you, Commissioner. And I and there I don't know whether or not that is the only credit card over at Common Pleas Court. Sometimes we authorize. My comments, please. I'm concerned about veterans. Uh, understood, but you had referenced sure. the, the, the relative levels. Uh -huh. um, so um, I, I can certainly check on that. But when you think about uh, registrations for, for conferences, training, things of that nature, um, you know, that, that just knowing from experience that that could add up pretty quickly even for one person but we can follow up certainly and and, and uh, find find out exactly what their purposes are for this particular card and is this a repeat have they had a card before I believe they have but I'll but I'll could follow up on that um, okay. you, it's, it's pretty standard for departments to have one uh, every year so um, uh, I, I would imagine they've had one in the past but I'll confirm that okay thank you that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. And uh, Jeff, on the Veteran Services Commission, do we make any appointments on there, or how does that work, or is it? All up on the appointment uh, schedule for, for veterans and, and our appointment status there, Madam President. I can do that right after the meeting for you. Okay, great. All right, I'd like to make a motion to approve item this number 5 through 14. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Drehow? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Any other comments? No further business. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Drehow? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes.